Hello everyone, Mike Uyak here. Welcome to another episode of Recipe Redemption. Today's going to be a little bit different in that I'm not really doing a recipe that's a horror show all by itself. Now, I want to highlight the fact that um, the things that I'm critiquing and hopefully redeeming are the recipes themselves, not necessarily the dish. Now, up to this point, they've been horrible dishes too. Um, but uh, and th and it, what I really want to get to is redeeming the recipes because there might be a recipe for something for a dish that is, is perfectly good. It could be a, you know, a lasagna, a moussaka, uh, apple pie, whatever, but the recipe itself is bad. And what I want to highlight today is a recipe that I've gotten for um, goulash, Hungarian goulash. It's basically a beef stew but it has paprika as its main flavoring ingredient. Now you remember in a previous video, I mentioned how it's important to be able to read a recipe. It's an important skill to have. It's also important to be able to interpret and fix a recipe when it goes wrong and to know that it's gonna go wrong ahead of time. Now, to highlight this, I'm going to cook this recipe for goulash that I've got exactly as written and I want you to see if you can figure out what's wrong with it as I go along. Recipe starts with one pound of well-trimmed boneless beef round or in this case chuck cut into one inch pieces, one half teaspoon of salt and one quarter teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, one cup of chopped onions plus a teaspoon of chopped garlic, two cups of sliced mushrooms about a third of a pound, one cup of non-fat reduced sodium beef broth, two cups of peeled diced boiled potatoes, it's about one pound, two cups of peeled thinly sliced carrots, I've chosen to dice mine, but that won't change the recipe really, one cup of sliced celery, again, I have chosen to dice this, 12 ounces of trimmed green beans cut into one inch lengths. And yes, I'm using frozen beans here because I'm cheap and I'm lazy. Here we have half a teaspoon of tomato paste and two tablespoons of paprika, two tablespoons of cornstarch, and two tablespoons of red wine. So here's the recipe. I deviate just a little bit from this because, you know, it seems silly to uh, spray a cooking pan and then add olive oil, but that's what they do. So uh, put oil in a pan, heat over medium high heat, Add the beef, the salt, and the pepper. Cook stirring occasionally until the beef browns should take six to eight minutes. Once the beef is brown, the recipe says to add the broth and enough water to barely cover the ingredients in the pot. Bring to a simmer, stirring occasionally. Add additional water if necessary to prevent the stew from drying out. It is, so I'm going to add a little more. Step three, without any indication of how long you're supposed to simmer that, whisk the cornstarch and wine in a small bowl until smooth. Stir the mixture into the goulash and cook over medium-high heat, stirring occasionally until slightly thickened and bubbly, about three minutes. Taste the sauce and season with salt and pepper if necessary. And there you have it, goulash. Any questions, class? Yes, you and back. What's that? Oh, this stuff? Yeah, the recipe never mentions it again. So obviously, we can do better by simply following the spirit of the recipe, if not the written word of the recipe. So let's saute off these vegetables and actually add them to it, shall we?
And here's the final product, a very rich, very meaty, very red stew, uh, perfect for serving over pasta, particularly a uh, type of pasta they call spetzel, um, which is a little hard to get in the grocery store. So you can still serve this over like egg noodles or just enjoy it the way it is. So I'm not saying that this is a great goulash recipe. Uh, I'm definitely not even saying that it's an authentic goulash recipe. I, I don't think there are too many Hungarian grandmothers who are using a whole bunch of cornstarch um, to thicken with, or, you know, much tomato paste for that matter. Um, it could probably uh, benefit from a little bit of sour cream. Um, they kind of give the, give the broth a little bit more richness uh, instead of the tomato paste. Um, you know, probably a little bit more in the way of herbage and whatnot, but for a basic, uh, supposedly low calorie or low calorie density version of goulash, not bad once you figure out how to actually cook it. Um, so, you know, definitely sent in a message to, uh, the people who wrote the recipe saying, yeah, you need to edit better because, uh, you know, if your audience isn't very good at cooking, uh, can't figure out what you intended, then they're just going to follow the instructions and say, what about all these vegetables? So, again, really, really important to uh, develop the ability to read a recipe critically and not only know how to follow the instructions, but know when to not follow the instructions because they're just plain wrong. So again, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, again, please subscribe, like the video, share it with all your friends and family and complete strangers for that matter. Um, and do please contact me and let me know if you have any ideas for recipes that I should redeem, both uh, vintage recipes as well as modern ones. Uh, there, there are <laughs> innumerable horrible recipes out there and I want to try them. So. Until next time, this is Mike Yak for Recipe Redemption. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, Mike Yak here for Recipe Redemption. Um, you may have noticed in the previous videos that I've shot so far for this series, um, with the exception of a few that are um, not pointed into this kitchen, um, there have been some issues with, uh, well, with the space that I have to work with. Namely, there's just not enough room for me and a tripod with a camera on it uh, to really get the angles that you need. So a lot of times you're looking over my shoulder and a lot of times my hands are in the way. Hopefully, I've come up with a solution to that problem. Walking into the kitchen looks fine until you look up. I have taken two by four and a framing bracket to hold it in place. Nice and level. Goes all the way across the top of the cabinetry to the other side. Meanwhile, down here, I have taken basically a microphone stand and I have replaced the actual microphone holder with a one quarter by 20 screw that fits into the camera mount for my little handheld video camera. On the other end, this is uh, this microphone stand features just a C-clamp style uh, attachment point, which I have connected, which I have screwed onto a, a block of wood that I've screwed. Well, that actually ends up being a concrete anchor, but it just happened to be a long piece of metal that happened to be the right size that I wanted. Now the two by four, I've drilled a hole in it so that do 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 there we go that bolt fits down in that hole camera now looks down on whatever i'm doing on the stove and that block allows me to also swivel so if i'm over at the cutting board the camera can also whoops the camera can also <laughs> look over my shoulder this way and film whatever I'm doing on the cutting board over here, which is now covered with crap. But, so this covers the pretty much the entire kitchen. 
There's even uh, space for there's even space for uh, lights if I so desire. Um, I can connect lights to uh, this this uh, two by four that goes across, and um, everything will be a little bit better lit. Hopefully, now that my hands aren't in the way, um, or shoulders, or just my my back. Uh, isn't in the way you'll actually be able to see what I'm doing I can get a little bit closer to the action and uh, hopefully this will be an improvement in uh, the video quality going forward so this is just a demonstration of uh, how with just a few simple tools and so a little bit of know-how you too can lower the resale value of your home <laughs> actually uh, I promised my wife that uh, any modifications that I did in order to shoot these videos um, would be minimally invasive. So all of this breaks down so you can't even, uh, basically just has two nails up on the wall where something might hang and uh, you can't tell that uh, on days when I'm shooting videos this place looks a lot more like a construction zone than a kitchen. Um, not that it's much of a kitchen anyway, but hopefully uh, that means that going forward we'll have better videos. So that's what I've been up to today and uh, Here's hoping this uh, makes it makes a difference.